welcome back to another video. So as you can see, I have this beautiful coloring book here. This is Flora by Maria Trolle. And today we are going to do a video on the basics of highlights, shading, and shadows. I'm going to make this video very, very beginner friendly. I am going to try to stick with only three colors for each color combination on each section of the coloring page that I've chosen to color. I would love for you all to be able to follow along if you have this coloring book. I am going to share the colors as I move around the page and color and do the tutorial. So it will be very easy for you to follow and it's going to cover all of the basics of coloring and how I decide where I want to lay my colors, my highlights, my shadows, how I'm going to go through the page and add more depth and dimension to whatever it is I'm coloring. I did put up a poll in my Facebook group and this was the most popular request. We are going to be using Prismacolors for this video, so if you have Prismacolors and this coloring book, go ahead and get those out so you could follow along with the tutorial. If you're catching this video at the live premiere, you could always go back and re-watch it. You could watch it all the way through with us, join in on the live chat the first time, and then you can always go back and re-watch it. So you could pause the video and go back and forth and re-watch all of the important sections that you feel like you missed or you would like to watch so that you could follow along a little bit easier. If you check the description box down below, you will find links down there for everything that you see in this video, as well as links for my email list, my Etsy shop, my Facebook group, and my Patreon if you would like to support me there. I also now have channel membership if you would like to get more information on that. All you have to do is click the join button down below. So this is the page that I chose to color today. I flipped through so many Maria Trolle books <laughs> and I was looking for a page that really truly inspired me and this one just really popped out at me and said, color me. <laughs> So we are going to work on this page today and I am going to color this adorable little tree house here. I thought it was just so, so cute. I am going to stick with a muted color palette because I decided that I'm gonna go through my Prisma color set and I'm gonna pull out some different colors that I don't generally use. So let's go ahead and go over the colors that I'm using today. Now, like I said, I'm gonna to try to stick with three colors in every color combination for each section of this house that I'm coloring. And I'm doing that because I wanna make it much easier for those of you that are beginners and you just really want to learn how to lay your colors down using just three colors. I feel like that makes it a lot less complicated and a lot less overwhelming and you can do a whole lot with just three colors. So I'm going to try not to bring other colors in unless it's another color just so I could show you how to create a lot more extra added depth and create more shadows in a certain section of this little tree house here. So the colors that I decided to go with for this part of this little house are eggshell and this color is really beautiful. It's going to give it an extra pop wherever I have those highlights and I like to do that whenever I'm picking my color combinations. I like to be sure even if I'm using more muted colors that I have a color that's really going to stand out and I have tested all of these colors off to the side. Here is my sheet right here where I have been just testing some colors to see what goes well together and so I've got eggshell and my next color is beige sienna and then sienna brown and then for the framing like on the windows and in these different sections and possibly the door i have rosy beige for my highlights i have peach beige and then i have henna and i thought these would be really pretty with those other colors and then again for the leaves up here on the top of the little house i have prussian green sap green light and gray green light. So the reason I chose the colors that I did and I stuck with all muted tones is because I want to make sure the colors just flow across the page and come together really beautifully. A lot of times when you watch my videos you'll see me choose colors like really bright yellows. Like if I'm doing leaves you'll see me choose something like a lemon yellow or something like maybe a yellow chartreuse or even the neon yellow. And I do that because I like to see things really, really pop. But in this instance, I'm using colors that are a little bit more toned down and you're gonna see when it's all finished and it's all completed how everything just flows together. And at the same time, we're still creating a little bit of contrast between this part of the house and then the top part of the house where these beautiful leaves are. Okay, so I zoomed you in a little bit more and I think that we are going to start with this part of the house and then we're gonna do the leaves. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my eggshell and when I'm doing something like this, I like to preserve my highlighted areas. 
So I'm going to grab my eggshell, and again, this is a little bit muted, but it still does have a little bit of brightness to it. And I wanted to use this color because I wanted you all, even though I'm using more muted tones, I wanted you all to really be able to see where I'm adding the highlights. So I'm going to come in around here and very lightly, I'm going to add a lot of this color. Now I have a window here. So generally around the window, I would assume that there is a little bit more light in this area because I would have the light from the inside of the little house reflecting outward. And so even though I've got a lot of shading in this area, like you could look up here and you could see these little leaves hanging over the house here, it is generally going to have to be darker in this area here underneath these leaves. But I also want to take into consideration that I have a window here and so the light from the inside of the house is going to be reflecting outward. So I'm going to add quite a bit of this color in this area. And again, when I lay down this color, this is also acting as just a first layer of color. So I'm gonna color, cover a lot of this and when I come back with my mid-tone, you're gonna see that I leave a whole lot more highlights in this area here than I do over here because over here I would have to imagine we've got a lot of leaves, we have this little piece here where we're gonna have to create some depth and dimension to show that this is laying on top of this part of the building here. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add a little bit of highlights, but not a whole lot. And then I would also have to assume that over here in this area, there's a lot less lighting hitting over here because we've got all of these leaves or vines, whatever they are here, laying right in front of this area here of this little house. So I'm gonna come back in with my mid-tone and while I'm doing this, at the same time, I want to also be able to add some texture and depth and dimension, all while caring where the lighting or most lighting would be hitting on my little house here. So I'm gonna take my mid-tone color, which is the beige sienna, and I'm gonna start trying to add just a little bit of texture. And I'm gonna go in a little bit deeper in some of the areas where there would be a lot less light hitting, like under here where these leaves are and all around the frame of the door and right here where I have this little piece sticking outward you can tell that this is actually on top of this part of the building so over here it is generally going to be a lot darker on this side of the building so I'm going to take my mid-tone and I'm just pretty much going to lay a whole lot of that color right over the top of anywhere that I added that highlight because that's also going to create a blend of those two colors together and so it will still pop just a little bit but over here it's going to be quite a bit darker than it is over here in this area. And then over here I have the door where it is laying right on top and remember I still have my other color so I'm going to be coming back with my other color and laying that down as well. And that's where you're going to see a whole lot of difference. Now over here we have this little flower that is laying to the front of the little house. So I'm gonna add a little bit more color in this area over here and down here where I have these other flowers I'm going to add a little bit more color because I want a little bit more depth and dimension all down here in these areas. And of course, I'm gonna come back with my darkest color and I'm going to add even more color in those areas. And I want a lot more of this color here where the leaves are covering over the top part of the house. And I am gonna be coming back with my darker color and we are really going to create a whole lot of dimension right here where the leaves are falling over the house. So that is just our first layer. And so we are gonna come back now with the Sienna Brown. And I think now you're really going to start seeing a difference as I start applying this color. I'm gonna come under here where I have the leaves and very lightly, I'm gonna go into these sections and start applying some of this color. And anywhere that I have the lines where I want to create a little bit more texture, I'm gonna go over those areas as well. But I'm gonna to try to stay out of those other areas where I have made sure that I really want to see a lot of those highlights. So over here where I have this little piece hanging over the top, which is set to the front of the house, 
you can see as I lay this color down all the extra depth and dimension that it is creating right here in this space. Now I'm going to have to take this sienna brown and I'm going to have to lay it in all of these areas where I have something laying over the top of something else. And all around the door, because I want the door to stand out, I'm going to have to make sure that I add this color in there as well. And again, I'm going very lightly, I'm not using hard pressure at all. To make sure that you're not putting a whole lot of pressure on your pencil, if you are a beginner and you are not trained yet, to make sure you don't put a whole lot of pressure behind your pencil, just hold your pencil further back like this and then that will stop you from being able to apply a lot of pressure onto the tip of your pencil but you also need to be able to have enough control of your pencil and a lot of times when I go that far back if I'm trying to get into a much smaller area like frame this door here it doesn't give me enough control of my pencil so that's why I'm a little bit closer but after coloring for so many years I pretty much train myself to be able to have much lighter pressure. I used to be one of those people that had such a heavy hand and sometimes I still can be, so I have to be very, very careful when I'm coloring because you don't wanna add a whole lot of color all at once. You want your colors in the end to seamlessly come together and you want very smooth transitions. You want to be able to get quite a few layers down on the paper. And to do that, you really need to be careful with how much pressure you've got behind your pencil. Now up here where I have this door and I'm trying to frame the door around where this other part of the house is, I'm gonna be very careful not to go all the way to the top right here because I am trying to leave just a little bit of space here so that I don't have the darker color here as well as over here. And I may need to bring in another color just to increase the amount of depth I'm able to get right here in this area because when all of this is said and done and all the colors have come together, I want this part here to really look separate from this, this part of the house and it's sitting to the the front. So to make sure that this house, when it's all done, really looks like it is popping off the page, I like to come over here and very lightly add a lot of my darker color. And I go in an up and down motion to do that, but when I'm pulling it inward, I sort of go in a circular motion, so this way I don't have any harsh lines. And I am going to need to come back with my mid-tone and blend these colors out, just so that they all look a lot smoother and I've got really nice transitions and there are no obvious harsh lines. And like I said, I wanna make sure there's a good amount of this color up in this area here, because I want this to be much darker than then the areas over here where I would imagine I would have more light. I do also want to mention that everybody sees light a little bit differently. So where you would imagine the light is coming from or being reflected onto this house may be different than where I am imagining the light to be coming from and reflecting onto the different parts of the house. Now, if I were coloring the page as a whole, then I would have to take into account that the light is probably coming from possibly this direction here, but then I would also have to take into account that I've got lots of leaves up here that are covering where the light is coming from on this page as well. So there's going to be a lot of shading that is going to need to be done on this page also if I were coloring the page as a whole because you have a whole lot of things over here. You've got this plant over here coming up and blocking a lot of the light. You probably have a little bit, a very little bit of light shining down in through here, touching the tip of where the uh, leaf top on the house starts. But then you have this big tree over here blocking a lot of the light, and you have these leaves here covering a lot of the light as well. So you may, if you were coloring the whole entire page, you may want to put a little bit of highlights down in here and imagine that they're coming this way throughout here. And we may do a little bit of that when we get to the rooftop and color in the leaves. So now I'm gonna come back with my beige sienna and I'm gonna come in here and start adding another layer. And I'm going to sort of go in a circ circular motion so I can pull some of these other colors out where I wanted to create a little bit of added extra depth and texture and shading and shadows but I don't wanna go over the areas where I intentionally wanted to leave that highlight. 
Over here in this area, I'm going to need to do a lot more shading and blend a lot of these colors in a little bit more. And like I said, I may need to bring in another color, but I'll do that at the end just to show you another little tip on how I would make something really pop and add all that extra depth and dimension. And now I'm gonna come back with my eggshell and I'm going to start adding a lot more of this color into the areas where I really want that highlight to really stand out. And you will start to see after I add some more of this color, it really does start to pop because this color is not just a little bit more muted than some of the other colors that have yellow in them that I would generally use, but it does still have a little bit of brightness to it. So now you could see here where I wanted a lot more of that highlight. I do now have a lot more of that highlight all around where the window is. And so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna sort of use this color Color to blend some of these colors together just to add a little bit of that brightness. So you can see now that I have actually made a plan for where all my colors are going to be, where I want the extra highlighted areas to be, where I want the extra depth and dimension to be, and the shadows and the shading. And so we're going to start now adding all the depth and dimension that we need so that this really pops off the page. And then we're going to come in and we're going to do the leaves or the little leaf rooftop which is just so adorable. Okay, so I have my Sienna Brown and I sharpened my pencil. I have a very nice sharp, sharp tip. And if you're curious about what pencil sharpener I'm using, I am using this Jar Link. This is one of my very new favorites. I still use my doll and that one is great if you want a hand crank pencil sharpener but this one is one and done. It's very, very quick. You stick it in, it auto stops. I always leave it on three you could see down here that it is on the number three and you put your pencil in here and it definitely auto stops and it has been great with my Prismacolors. If you've not yet seen the review on the jar link, I'll link that in the upper right hand corner so that you can see it. So now I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to start going over all of these areas where I have the natural lines in the artwork and in any of the places where I have something laying over the top. And you are gonna see that this starts to add lots of de depth and dimension and it's gonna start to create a huge difference in the values of the colors. And I'm gonna continue to do this over the whole entire house with the Sienna Brown and I'm gonna speed this up as I do it because it helps you to see it just all come together really quickly. color down there now and you can see that I have a whole lot more highlights over here and I have shaded in a whole lot over here where I would imagine there would be a lot less light hitting this little house. So now I'm going to come back with my beige sienna and I'm going to just blend some of these colors together and again you're going to see that I am going up and down over the colors and I'm pulling them down into one another and just sort of blending the colors together. And so you can see now over here in this section, this section is going to be a lot darker, but you could still see the texture and the depth and the dimension. And this is the section where I wanted to see a lot more light. And so I'm just pulling this color up into that highlight color and just sort of blending the colors together. And I think this color is actually adding a really nice contrast. And over here, I do need to come back and just really blend that color out, but I don't wanna to go too far over because remember I wanted a lot of that highlight there. So now I'm going to grab my eggshell and I'm just gonna come back one more time and I'm gonna go over all of the highlighted areas like over here, down underneath the window, and then over here I just want to blend these colors together. And see, just looking at this, I'm already changing what I decided originally that I wanted to do. Now I'm thinking that after I color the top part of the house here green, I may wanna go ahead and do the door 
and the windows in the same color. So that way there is enough of a contrast between them and the door and the window really stand out off of this little tree house here. A lot of times I'll have a plan in the very beginning. I will have all my colors picked out and everything else and I am still gonna use the colors I had picked out, but now I'm starting to think that these colors here that I was originally going to use for the windows are going to be too much like the colors that I chose here for the little tree house. And I'm thinking that those greens are really going to stand out and pop a lot more. So I'm thinking that I'm going to go ahead and do the door and the window in green to bring the colors from the top of the house where all these leaves are down into the bottom of the house. And this way it will help it to flow even more. And at the same time, it's going to bring balance to this adorable little house. Let's talk a little bit about the lighting here at the top part of this adorable little house. So like I said earlier, you may imagine that there is is a little bit of light just coming through here but I would think that because the space is so small where we have all of these plants sort of laying over the little house I would assume that there is a whole lot of coverage here so we wouldn't need to reflect a whole lot of light coming down into here aside from maybe just a few more highlights on the very tip or the very top of this house and maybe a little bit downward into this section here. So the other change that I decided to make <laughs> is I don't think that the gray green light is really going to show up a whole lot. So I've decided to bring the color from down here into the top part of the house. So I'm going to add the eggshell in with my sap green light and my Prussian green, and I think that will give it a little bit more of a pop in these leaves. And then we will be able to reflect the little bit of light that may be coming right down this way, hitting the top part of this leaf rooftop, and maybe coming down into this section a little bit over here. So let's go ahead and grab the eggshell, and I am gonna lay this color down in every one of these leaves. And I didn't even test these colors, but I'm just assuming that this eggshell is going to look nice with these other colors because anything usually that has any bit of a yellow tone in it is generally going to look pretty with greens. So I'm just doing this all over all of these leaves and I'm just actually using this as a first layer. So now I have my sap green light and I do have a fairly sharp lead. I'll show you what my lead looks like here. But it's sharp, but it still has a little bit of a rounded or flat tip. Since I have a much smaller area here, it's still going to allow me to be a little bit more cautious about where I'm laying the colors. Now we do have a lot of over lapping areas so you do have to be mindful here of which leaves are laying over which leaves and you need to make sure that you're also not just making sure that you are creating the look that that light is reflecting downward to these sections to where they would be a little bit lighter but you also need to be able to show where one leaf is laying over the other one so to do that anywhere where one leaf is touching the other or laying over, I'm going to add a little bit more of this color. So right here where I have this leaf laying over this one, and right here where this leaf is laying over the top of this one, I'm just gonna come right down into here. And this is again, just adding another layer as well. I do have a darker color, so I am gonna have to come back, and that color is going to help me to add a whole lot more depth and dimension. And over here where I have this little pipe sticking up, I wanna make sure I add a little bit more color down in there. And over here these leaves there is not much light over here at all so I'm going to try to reflect that in the way that I color it again and these here are all going right over the window I would imagine that there's a little bit more light hitting right over here now I do want to make each one of these leaves look a little bit different from one another as well so that they don't all look the same so now I'm coming back with my darkest color and you're gonna see the huge difference when I lay this color I'm really going to start adding in some of that that depth and dimension and it's really going to start making these leaves come to life. In this section up here, I do want to make sure that I keep a little bit more of those highlighted sections, but also create that depth and dimension that I need to show where the leaves are laying over one another. And as you can see, like I always like to do when I'm coloring leaves is I am going over some of those veins that are in the leaves and the artwork and that also helps to create depth and dimension. Though as you all could probably see it's all about the difference in the values of your colors. Since I chose colors that are very 
different from one another or there's a huge difference in the values. Let me go ahead and show them to you. With Prismacolor, the color you see on the tip of the pencil is the color that you're gonna see when you lay it down on your coloring page. You can see that they pretty much match up exactly, but you could see that there is a huge difference in value. And then here with my lightest color, since I swapped out those colors, I was gonna use this one, which is a whole lot lighter so there is a huge difference in the values between these two colors but I decided to go with this one because I wanted to create a little bit of contrast and I sort of wanted to make those leaves pop just a little bit and since this is a little bit more of a muted color but at the same time it does have some brightness to it I feel like that will do the trick and then it will also create balance between the two sections of the house so I'm gonna come through here and I'm going to lay my darkest color everywhere I need to and I'm gonna speed it up to music so y'all can just see it all come together So I think it's coming together really nicely. Okay, so I sharpened my pencil and I'm gonna use this sap green light to just blend out some of these colors. And again, up here, I want to see a lot more of my highlight color. So I'm not pulling this down too far. In the top part of this rooftop here, I really want to be able to see a lot more of my highlighted colors. I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab my eggshell and I am going to add these highlights in here and use a little bit harder pressure because I want to make sure that I don't go over these sections where I want the highlight. So I'm basically doing this for a placeholder. <laughs> But look at the difference that color makes. I'm so glad I decided to change the colors that I was using. So I wanna see a lot more of that over here in this section and then over here where I would assume there is still a little bit of light coming down in here. And then as I move further down, I'm going to stop adding as much of this color. But I would imagine there's quite a bit of light hitting over here because it's streaming right down this way. And then I want a little more light around here because of the window here, assuming that some of the light is reflecting outward into these areas from the inside of the house. Okay, so now that I have that color laid everywhere I want it and sort of just going down this direction, I'm going to now use my sap green light and I'm gonna start pulling some of these colors together and blending them in. And I'm gonna leave a little space for my highlight, but not as much as I did on the other side. And I'm going in a circular motion and just blending all of these colors together. So you can see even over here in these sections where I have a lot less highlight, before I even come back and I add that highlight color, just a very little bit to the edges, you can see that even with two colors, you can still create something really pretty. back with the eggshell and I'm going to add a little bit of pop into some of the places down on these leaves here and look at what a difference that makes it really just brings all the colors together but you can see that it looks like there is a lot less light over here than there is over on this side so the lighting would be hitting or reflecting right down in these areas here. And then here where these leaves are laying over the top of the house I want to make sure I add just a little bit at the tips so that these leaves stand off of the house. So I'm looking at this and I feel like it doesn't have enough depth and dimension. So I'm gonna come back with my darkest color, which was my Prussian green. And I'm gonna see if I could create a little bit more depth all throughout this rooftop. And I'm gonna see if I could do it with this color. If I can't do it with this color, then I will go ahead and bring in a darker green and I will show you the difference and why it's so important to have those extra shadows there. But now I am using a little bit harder pressure and hopefully you could see that it is making quite a bit of a difference. So with the Prismacolors or any colored pencil, you could see by just adding another layer and using harder pressure that you're going to be able to create all this extra added depth and that's because dependent upon the pressure from each pencil, I can create different values of that color with just one pencil. And so just by doing this, it is changing it up 
a whole lot. And I'm still trying to be very careful about where I lay these colors. I want a lot more of this color in the bottom part of these leaves because again, I want to keep much more light up here. Okay, so now I'm getting to the top part and I want to make sure that I don't add too much of this color, but just enough so that you could see the separation of each one of these leaves. I still do want to see quite a bit of my mid-tone and especially that highlight in these areas. So I decided I want to try something and I'm going to take my gray green light and I'm going to add a little bit of this color in there too since it was my original plan and all I'm doing is using this to spread some of these other colors out so that I don't lose those highlights in this section up here. And I think this is actually creating quite a nice contrast and it's spreading all those colors out. So I think I have the colors now all laid where I want them, but I'm gonna show you all a little quote unquote hack. <laughs> to be able to add a little bit more dimension. So greens are cool colors. And so I grabbed my 70% cool gray and I'm just going to go over some of the areas where I want it to be just a little bit darker, creating a little bit more depth and dimension in those areas. And as I go through and do that, I'm just going to speed it up to music. So now I have my sap green light and I'm just blending some of these colors out now that I have all of the colors where I want them. And when you use grays, if you are using cool colors, you just make sure you go with a dark enough cool gray to create those shadows. And it's just a really cool trick to be able to add extra depth and dimension. And then on these ones on the top, I'm going to come back with my eggshell and I'm just adding those highlights back in. And if you wanted to come back with Posca to make the highlighted areas stand out even more, you could always do that too. If you wanted to use the white of the paper to create those highlights, you can do that as well. But you can see that now the top section here does have a little bit more light. And then this section down here, I came back with a little bit more of the grays so that I can make sure that it was a tad bit darker, just to emphasize that there is a lot less lighting down here in this area. And I think that to color the windows and the doors, I'm gonna have to go ahead and do that to a speed color and set it to music because this tutorial has gone on so long, I've probably been filming for an hour and a half. It takes a whole lot longer to film or to color when you have to talk through the whole entire thing. <laughs> and explain what you're doing. So I have been coloring for a lot longer than what you all actually see on the edited version. So I'm gonna come through and I'm just going to color all of these other areas so you could see this little house come together. I did grab my sand and I want to add a little bit of lighting on the inside of the windows because I think that makes a little bit of a difference and when I do that I do leave a little bit of white on the outside and I did go ahead and bring in the other colors that I never got a chance to use to color the little knob here and then these little hinges on the door as well as this up here I used these two colors here so I did use the sienna brown which is what I used here in this part of the house and then I used the rosy beige as well, which is one of the colors I mentioned in the beginning of the video that I didn't end up using on the doors because I really just wanted the doors to really stand out and I wanted to be able to create that contrast. And the only thing that I would like to come back and do is just to add a little bit more depth and dimension on this part of the house. So I grab my dark brown and I'm going to test this out and see if it works. <laughs> just because I want a little bit more dimension here. And I think that is dark enough. Now you see the difference that makes? And then I just wanna go over all of these areas. I also want you all to see the difference it makes by just bringing in one last color if you feel like something doesn't have enough depth and dimension. Because especially right here where I have this little piece 
laying over the top. I really want to make sure that looks as though it's laying over the top. So look at the difference just adding in that extra color made. And sometimes you do just need to add one extra color that is a little bit darker and it will help you to add lots of extra depth and dimension. Over here where I want two separate spaces and I want to add a little bit more color into this part that is sticking out from the house. And then on all of the lines and just around the doors and the other objects on the house. But I feel like this makes such a huge difference. And I'm going to do this all over the whole house and again I'm going to speed it up and this way you can watch it all come together and see the huge difference it makes. is done. I've really enjoyed this one. When I saw this page, it just literally popped out at me and said, color me. And I knew it would be the perfect page to be able to do a tutorial on highlights and shading and shadowing and explaining where I lay my colors and how I lay my colors. And even in the middle of the page, I had a change of mind. And it shows you that it's okay to change your mind when you get halfway through because you feel like something is going to look a bit different than what you had originally planned. So I think this video was a whole lot of tutorials in one and hopefully you learned a whole lot. You saw that I came back at the end there and I added a little bit of Posca just to intensify some of those highlights over here where the light would be reflecting down from this very small space onto our little house here. But I really loved doing this. This was so much fun. Everything you've seen in this video will be in the description box below. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.